Welcome back to another episode of Answering Your Questions. So if you're new here, this is an ongoing series where I answer recent questions I've received on my videos that I think could be of value to you all. Also, pretty excited on this video sponsor, Rise Mushroom Coffee. More on them later. Mm. Okay, so my goal for this video is to fire off more questions, shorter answers to get through more of them. And I tried to find some that I haven't really answered in this series. Let's jump into the first one. This one is on my how to shoot food photography, a really cool video on how I photograph some food for a local water park. Interested? Check it out. How about using a constant light for food photography? I have an Amaran 60D with a lantern softbox. So definitely try it out. In that video that I did, I used the AD200 Pro, which is an off-camera flash, and I was running that through my 36-inch softbox. That was a really ideal setup because I was dealing with ambient lighting. I wasn't in a controlled scene like a studio where I could have full control over the lighting, so I did have to have something that could overpower the ambient lighting. So if I was using something like an Amaran 60D, it probably wouldn't have been strong enough, but if you do this in a studio, that might work. I just feel like it's still not as strong because I have an, a 60X that I always use as a hair light, just because it's not that powerful through a softbox. So it's definitely worth trying out, but maybe something like a 120D or 300D might be ideal. If not, go with an off-camera flash. Next up, this is on how to make 100K doing real estate photo and video. Do you have a media service agreement or contract template that you sell? No, I don't, but mine is very simple. I just hunted around for a general contract photography agreement, took that, tweaked it to my business, and just kind of over the years, adapted it to whatever's going on in the sense of adding new terms or conditions, just making it more you. I feel like you don't have to really buy one. There's plenty of free ones out there, even through Google Docs and things like that, and just adapt it to your business. I don't feel comfortable selling one because I'd hate to somehow be liable in that sense. And so I just, like I said, adapted one over the years, even from my wedding days to just fit my business now. This is on my how to shoot real estate videos, everything you need to get started. That video has skyrocketed recently. It's pretty cool. Amazing video, curious about how you price this shoot. And if you can share any tips that'd be brilliant sharing this because I see a lot of comments on what do you charge for video what do you charge for this what do you charge for this type of work so again my answer is check your local area what is the market average because it can honestly vary area by area but here my business charges anywhere from $500 on the low end all the way up to $2,000 but that $2,000 package that I actually shot this week is a blend of doing the listing photos drone work the lifestyle video we did the listing video a reel so we bundle a bunch of things together to get that cost up there versus just one or two things like just one video but the price point for the video that I featured in this behind the scenes was $7.50. It's also really early in the morning, so I need to get my rice mushroom coffee. Next up, someone said, advice for a realtor with a camera looking to grow their business. So this is a little vague, but I'm gonna try and answer this from what I'm gathering about this. In my opinion, I think you're in a really great position. It's kind of like me as a YouTuber because I'm in a position where I can not only produce the content, but I'm also the talent in the videos. And so I can do both. Same thing with you. You're a realtor and you can do your own marketing, most likely. You could do your listing photos, your listing content. You can see how other agents in your area are leveraging social media and being successful doing it and do it for your own stuff. So I think you're in a pretty valuable position to do all of your own content as well. Again, on how to make 100K doing real estate photo and video, great tips, curious as what you charge, offer for your monthly reoccurring video services. So I've mentioned this before, but basically do content shoots on a monthly basis for realtors and real estate teams. And actually we brought on a new client last month, which is a watch dealer, really unique, really cool. And even though they're not in real estate, they just wanna step up their social content. So of course we're gonna do it. Plus it's pretty interesting stuff stuff. I like watches. But I would say you can just curate some packages and see how they work out for you. So for example, for me, they start at a thousand bucks and go up from there. Basically, we offer a certain amount of shoot days, a certain amount of short form video deliverables, and a certain amount of photos per each package. One being kind of geared for like a small essential package, the second one being the most ideal with more content than the first one, and then so on. So that's currently what we're doing for our monthly content packages, and now we just brought on our fourth client for that, which is really cool. Really looking to grow that this year to bring on a couple more. This is on my first video that ever got a lot of views, the real estate photography, breaking down my workflow gear plus settings. It's so funny because I 
film that on my iPhone 10. Are you shooting RAW or JPEG with three bracketed shots? So I wanted to mention this because I also saw this in my community group where they were asking if you should shoot RAW or JPEG if you're doing bracketed photos and you're blending them. So if you're gonna edit yourself, I would shoot RAW, especially in the beginning because that way you'll have the most flexibility to adjust your settings if you didn't shoot them correctly on the shoot. Now, if you're more of a seasoned real estate photographer and you're outsourcing your editing or you have it down and it seems to work as JPEG, then sure, of course, if that works and you're gonna save a lot more space, great. I still up to this point shoot raw, but I've actually started using compressed raw. So a lot of cameras have C raw or compressed raw, which is half the file size with a little bit more compression on them. But again, if you have your settings dialed in right and you're getting the same great results if you're outsourcing them or editing them yourself, then go for it. Next up, this is on my top luxury real estate videos from 2023. Basically, I broke down the top three videos we did. And this person said, hey, Andre, so you paid actors for these lifestyle videos. How much do you even charge for a huge project like that where you have to pay a group of people for it? That's some next level shit. So yeah, these are definitely my favorite types of videos to do. I've already done two this year, which is really awesome because that is our highest tier. That's kind of the most production work we put into these videos. And yeah, I think the final product is definitely really unique. So for these videos, we actually didn't have any actors that we had to pay. Typically the realtor will have their friends or the realtor themselves will be in the video and we just try and do our best to direct them. Obviously, it would be really great to get to the point where we can have a good connection of some local actors that we could bring on immediately or that we could bring on for each project. Not there yet. Hopefully I can actually get to that because I'm sure the videos would be even that much better. But if you're starting out, definitely just do it that way where if the realtor either has some of their family or their friends or themselves that would want to be in the video. Again, on my 100K doing real estate photo video, what do you do for medical insurance? So that sucks. There's no really good way around that. It's just really expensive. So here in America, you have to do the marketplace where you just have to buy it independently it's pretty expensive for me, my wife, and my daughter, but it's a must, especially for my daughter for checkups and sick days and things like that. But it can definitely be pretty expensive, so that's something you have to factor in whenever you're working on your own. Now, before continuing, I'm thrilled to announce the sponsor for this video. And if you're a fan of coffee like I am, you'll definitely be interested in this one. This is Rise Superfoods, and I specifically wanted to highlight their mushroom coffee, which has found its way to be a part of my morning ritual daily. And I know what you're thinking, mushroom coffee? That sounds crazy, but honestly, me and my wife cannot get enough of this. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm super excited to be partnering with Rise is because I've been using their product for the past six months before we even started working together. Loaded with adaptogenic mushrooms, the coffee blend delivers calmer energy, sharper focus, and immune support for a balanced body and clearer mind. Basically all the things that regular coffee does not. And if you're a photographer or videographer doing long shoot days or slammed with editing like me, it can be really easy to fall back on consuming a lot of coffee or energy drinks, leaving you feeling really jittery or crashing hard later. So I can honestly say I've been super happy having Rise Mushroom Coffee every morning. It's part of our daily ritual and it makes me feel great. Plenty of energy to get through the day and never feeling jittery. So if you're interested in picking up some Rise Mushroom Coffee, head to the link in the description and also use code ANDRER15 to get 15% off your order. Now back to the questions. Again, on the 100K video, I mainly do weddings at this time. What is your suggestion to have as seamless as a move as possible to still make money? So this is funny enough, the exact situation that I was in where I was doing wedding photo and video, and then I got burnt out in that, wasn't a good fit for my lifestyle and transition into real estate. And the best way to do that is to just build up your real estate media business or client base while you're still doing that. Basically, that's your full-time job. Your wedding gigs are paying the bills. And then once you have enough business on the real estate side, you can kind of transition into that full-time. So that's pretty much what I did. I kept doing other types of gigs until I could fully transition into real estate, kind of just do my real estate media business full-time and then not have to do weddings and other types of gigs, things especially that I didn't want to do. So now I don't really do any weddings at all whatsoever. Just because we're so busy in my media business, but that would be the best way to do it. So you're not kind of just going back to no income unless you're in a position where you can have really low expenses and just focus more on starting a real estate media business. Next up, what sequence settings are you using in Premiere like your timeline settings? So I just use the Ari Cinema and I just do a 3840 by 2160 4K timeline. And then for a vertical sequence, I do a 1080 by 1920 timeline and just that's it. 24 frames per second. This one I thought was funny. Can you do a tutorial on how you style your hair? That'd be so funny because I feel like I would do like a cinematic hilarious commercial for it, but no, all all I do is I actually just blow dry it upside down and then put some product and I don't have any right now. That's why I'm wearing a hat. 
This is on how to make thousands with headshot photography. Still a very big piece of my business. Last month we made probably like $5,000 just from headshot work. So it's definitely something you should get into. How do you get this location? Did you rent a spot or was the location given to you? So I see this all the time as far as locations and we typically always shoot at three main types of places. It's either a listing that the agent has access to, a connection to a model home they might have, or a studio itself. So out of those three things, that's where we'll do lifestyle photo shoots, video shoots, or content for them on a monthly basis. Or also if they have a nice office, that's somewhere you can do stuff. But for this answer, that's typically where we do them. Ideally in the future, one of the things I would love to do is own my own studio that I could rent out, but also use for all of my content shoots. Maybe something like that could be done in the future, but otherwise, those are the places we always do shoots at. This next question is on the DJI mic video, so I still use that today. The first one, they have a second version. The first one is just great still, so still using it for everything. Quick question, how much gain do you usually choose for your transmitter and receiver? I noticed that you have better audio compared to other content creators. Thanks. So I make sure that on the receiver that the transmitter is just not peaking. It's kind of hitting at an ideal level. But the biggest thing is also making sure that you're setting your audio manually in camera. So I make sure that it's not clipping on the receiver. And then I also make sure that I have it set between negative 12 and negative six in camera. That way it's not peaking or crazy compression going on. Don't use auto volume whenever you're recording with a mic. So if you have those two things set correctly, you're always gonna get really good audio. And nine times out of 10, unless I'm doing a really high-end video production, I'm just using the DJI mic for content shoots. Right now I'm using a boom mic, but again, that's a very controlled scene. This stays the same, I can do that. But otherwise, a DJI mic is a great solution for just any sort of content video shoot. Next, what is the best focal length and distance for your subject to avoid facial distortion? So I personally love to do all of our headshots with a 50 mil lens, and here's why. Other people might say 85 is better, 100 and so on, but in my case, 50 is the sweet spot. 50 mil is kind of the most natural looking focal length. 35 is another favorite, but it's way too wide for this type of work. If you're doing lifestyle stuff, where it's like full body or more lifestyle portraits, you could definitely do 35 mil. 50 mil, I feel like you don't really get hardly any distortion, especially if you get as close to the shoulder type shot for them. And it doesn't distort their face the other way because I feel like once you get to 85 mil and higher, it makes their face look bigger and they actually might be self-conscious about that and not like the photo. I've done that before where, you know, we were doing a big headshot session and I was using either a 100 or an 85 and it was too much and they didn't like the results versus is using a 50 looks really natural and that's just what I've always used. So I like to use a 50 mil lens, just a really great perspective, in my opinion, for headshots and portrait work. So next one, this question is not related to filmmaking. Haha, <laughs> what watch are you wearing? Looks really nice. Thanks, I actually do love watches, especially now working with that watch dealer shooting 60K Rolexes and up is insane. Hopefully one of those can be on my wrist one day because it is an investment. At the time of filming this video, I was just wearing a fossil watch, nice, clean, minimal, and now I'm actually wearing a black G-Shock that I got for Christmas. I just love that it's really durable. I can hit it on things and it looks really nice and it's just gonna last. So Fossil or G-Shock is kind of just affordable watches that I'll wear. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That is a wrap on this episode of answering your questions. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed and also put in your questions down below so I can answer them in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be part of the channel. And also make sure to check out Rise Mushroom Coffee. You definitely won't be disappointed. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.